Ladies and gentlemen, you are now entering the Decent Christian Talk podcast. Enjoy. Decent Christian Talk episode number 96. 96 may be the greatest year of all time to start a band. Maybe so. What's up? I'm Gabe Jones. I'm Josiah Jones. This is a show by the fans. For the fans. And we have an interesting episode today. Yes. I'm pretty excited about it. Tunch Yoken from the Pittsburgh Steelers is joining us today. Yes. And as a big Steelers fan, I know what happened over the weekend. I'm not happy about it. But this is... Tell people who Tunch Yoken is that don't know who Tunchokin is. So Tunchokin was uh, a stealer throughout the 80s, and he had, a, I think, a, like a 15-year career or so. Made the Pro Bowl a few times. He was like the vice president of the NFL Players Association. Uh, but he is... That, that was his story as a player. Uh, ever since he has been a broadcaster, he is... If you ever have tuned into a Pittsburgh Steelers game on the radio, you've heard his voice... He has a radio show every day during football season with Craig Wolfley. And yeah, so he is a prominent figure in the world of Pittsburgh sports. And he's on the show today. Yeah, I, I, it blows my mind how you do this stuff all the time. I don't know how you find these people. You probably just show up at their house and knock. Uh, well, I will, I will share how this happened in the Patreon bonus episode. Ooh. And if you want to check that out, check that out on patreon.com forward slash decent Christian talk. For as low as a dollar a month, you can join our team. For five dollars a month, you can get those said bonus episodes where we will talk about how in the world did I get a hold of Tunch Ilkin from the Pittsburgh Steelers? I'm interested. Yeah, uh, and that's an interesting story, and you won't want to miss it. If you are like, hey, where's the music at? Don't worry, we'll be talking all about the music in the bonus episode, including our discussion on this week's throwback album of the week, and it's the 20th anniversary of Audio Adrenaline's Underdog this week. Yeah, Nathaniel's going to be mad that you didn't call him. I mean, he's at he's at practice right now, coaching away, but this is his favorite album, maybe of all time. The outro to our show every episode comes off this album yeah i bet a lot of people i hope a lot of people know where that comes from you have to check it out for yourself to hear if you haven't if you've never heard the houseplant song listen to the houseplant song yeah and uh we would just like to thank everybody that has helped us out maria maria leslie jody michael hunter you guys are awesome and we would really challenge you guys to check that out help us out it keeps the lights on and it keeps our bills paid and it helps us upgrade things when they go bad, which is kind of what's been going on with us. But but that's yeah, we're getting computers and all kinds how, of stuff. How how old is the podcast now? It's a few years. Ninety six episodes. That's yeah, a while. Yeah. So uh, Tunch Elkin, he is on the show today. I uh, kind of gave you a brief background of him. Uh, he has a fun, awesome testimony. And it's better than the Steelers' performance this past weekend, unfortunately. Well, I th- I can think of a lot of things that are better than the Steelers' performance There's last weekend. There's not much things that are worse. I've had food poisoning that's been better than how they played. Yeah. But, you know. Hey, there's always next week. Just like the testimony of Tunjilkin that you'll hear, maybe there will be redemption. Maybe. We'll see. Maybe in like 10 years after they... Get rid of everybody that plays for the team right now. So a lot of you are probably that are living all over the country are probably thinking, gosh, I don't like the Steelers. <laughs> you'll still love this. Trust me, you'll love this interview. It's a fun conversation. Uh, Tunch Elkin is a guy that um, he's very eloquent. There's a reason why he's on the radio. Uh, he's He knows how to say what is on his mind and... He, like I said, he has a great story. And without further ado, here is our interview with Tunch Elkin. All right, hit that horn, babe. Let's dance. Yeah. 
yeah, getting started, what what are some? I know you have an interesting uh, faith journey. What are some of your first memories and recollections when it comes to faith? Well, you know, when I came to the Pittsburgh Steelers, um, I met a bunch of men uh, that loved Jesus, loved each other, and loved me. Uh, guys like uh, Mike Webster, John Kolb, Donnie Shell, John Stallworth, Craig Wolfley, Ted Peterson, Lauren Tace. And these guys, um, they lived a life that you wanted to check out. But, you know, uh, you know, they lived a life that, you know, demanded an explanation. Uh, they had a sense of purpose. They had a sense of love for one another. And, you know, uh, I grew up a Muslim, uh, born in Istanbul, Turkey. And, uh, you know, I thought Christians were weak. I thought they were goofy. And I didn't want anything to do with them. But when I came to the Steelers, uh, you know, all these guys that were men's men, you know, uh, Mike Webster uh, was the strongest man in the NFL in 1980. John Cole was the strongest man in the NFL in 1981. And he was... Uh, uh, third strongest man in, in the world's competition, and and Craig Wolfley was, was the head, and um, and Donnie Shell was uh, the human torpedo. He would hit anything. He would hit anything that moved, uh, and uh, and yet these men had uh, a sense of purpose and a sense of love, uh, and a sense of uh, you know duty to to share the good news of the gospel and i was very uh much moved by that i i wanted to know about this jesus uh my second year in the lead that uh, uh webby the question that every man woman and child has to answer uh is what happens when you die where are you going to spend eternity and and to why and I, I remember when he asked me that question I, I had no answer you know I, I went back to my uh, my uh, the teaching that I learned uh, in Islam and it it's kind of a, a scales mentality uh, uh, you know are you good enough uh, and uh, when uh, you know are your good deeds good enough and then when Webby uh, explained the gospel to me. He said that all of sin and fall short of God's standard and the penalty for that sin in Romans 6.23 is eternal separation from God. In other words, eternal death. Uh, but the good news is the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. And and Webby and Colby and Donnie Shell and all those guys had a relationship with the living God. They talked that they didn't talk about religion they talked about relationship and uh it just you know i just wanted to know uh more about jesus Hmm. and why he would die on the cross for me and and how i I could follow him yeah that that's that sounds like a a great um journey i I know you right you, you after you were in Istanbul, you, you your family went to the Chicago area, uh, do you, and and you went to college at Indiana State. Prior to going to the Steelers, what was your? I know a lot of people in that time are kind of apathetic with their faith. Did, did you have kind of the same thing, or or did the, or did you? Was there something more to that at that stage in your life? Well. You know, at, at that stage of my life, when I went to college, um, I was. Uh, I, I was just kind of a wild man. I was, uh, I, you know, I, I was a product of the seventies. I'm not making an excuse, but I was a druggie, a liar, a thief. Um, I was, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I was experimenting with all sorts of drugs, uh, through my college days and, uh, drinking. Um, you know, I, I fell for the, the lies of, uh, of manhood. You know, I thought men, uh, real men, uh, drank, real men did drugs, real men, real men pursued women, real men fought. Um, and, uh, you know, I fell for those, those lies. And so my whole college time, I was living like that. And, uh, 
Uh, and you know what? It, it, it's funny because I thought all these different things, whether it was alcohol, whether it's playing college football, whether it's playing NFL, uh, whether it's uh, all all these things that I was fooled by, I thought they would bring fulfillment. Hmm. Well, the French philosopher uh, Blaise, the French philosopher and scientist Blaise Pascal says that there's a God-shaped void in every uh, in the heart of every man, woman, and child that can only be filled by the person of Jesus Christ. And he said that God put us with that void there in our hearts so that we would pursue Him. But, uh, you know, I was pursuing that void in other things, and that none of those things were meeting it. You were meeting that need to be fulfilled. Uh, and, you know, you, you, you can't fill that void with Super Bowls. You can't fill, fill that void with Pro Bowls. You can't fill, fill that void um with money or with status, you can only fill that uh, with an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. And um, that's what I found out in, in my spiritual journey, that, uh, uh, that God alone could fill that void. And, uh, uh, and so that's why I started pursuing Jesus, mm -hmm. and I wanted to know more about this God, and I started reading the Word, and I was reading a book called The Late Great Planet Earth at the time by Hal Lindsey, and it's about the end time prophecy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was reading, and, and at the end of the, it's, it's funny because uh, Craig Wolfley and I were really close buddies. We've been best friends since 1980. And he was uh, sharing uh, the good good news of the cross with me and and uh, you know his father was dying of leukemia and i i was asking him you know craig how, how are you keeping it together with your dad um on death's doorstep and he said touch my dad loves jesus the moment he closes his eyes on earth he will open his eyes in front of uh, in front of the lord and god will say to him well done good and faithful servant, enter your master's reward. And, I, you know, I remember uh, we, we were talking about that. I go, how do you know? He says, well, in First John, it says, uh, this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this eternal life in, is in his son, Jesus. He who has the son has life. He who does not have the son of God does not have life. And he says, he continues, I write this so, so that you may know you have eternal life. And Craig said to me, I know I have eternal life. I know my dad has eternal life. Mm. Not because he's a good guy, although he is, but because Jesus died on the cross for him, for me, and for you, and for the world. Mm. That's good. Um, so, And uh, uh, because on our best day, we can never be good enough to get into heaven. Yeah. Right, right. Go ahead. Yeah, so so when you did join the Steelers and you were surrounded by that, I, I know a lot of times, especially in professional sports, there's a lot of temptations. And uh, so so how did you handle that? Was was it having those teammates around you a big help? Um, did you fill that void with God, but and not have experience the temptations that you did? But uh, what was that like for you? Well, you know, once I, uh, you know, so that night I went, that, that night that Craig, he, we were in his car. We, we just came back from a, a youth football banquet, and he, was, he said, do you want to receive Jesus? And I said, well, I don't know. And he said, you want to pray right now? You can. I said, no, that would be too weird, you know. So um, he said, I'd hate for you to wait too long because, uh, I for, hate for you to die before you had that opportunity. So I was, I walked out of his car, walking into my house, and I was thinking, wow. And so I was reading the end of Hal Lindsey's book, The Late Great Planet Earth, and at the end, he um, he challenges you to pray the sinner's prayer, and it's in the back of the book. And so I did that. And, um, you know, my life, uh, uh, it turned around pretty quickly, uh, Gabe. Um 
you know, number one, it, it, it took me about another year to quit doing drugs. But finally, I just said, all right, I got to stop this. If I'm going to follow Jesus, I'm going to follow hard after him. Uh, and I got to put these uh, put these old uh, the old ways. Uh, I've got to put the old ways away. Uh, and so uh, what was great was having all these accountability uh, partners hmm. and these brothers in Christ, you know, like Colby and Webby and Wolf and Ted uh, Peterson. I mean, we were all really close, and I started getting in, in Donnie Shell and um, you know what an example Donnie and John Stallworth were, and uh, Webby and Colby, and and uh, you know I, I, I watched them, and I and and as they followed hard after Christ, I was drawn to them, and. Um, and then in turn to Jesus. Hmm. So using that kind of analogy as, as a, of a locker room, and I know you like to use that analogy a lot for people that don't even play sports uh, that are facing tribulations and trials and, and uh, even temptations and addictions. What would you, what would you challenge them and what would you recommend to them? Well, you know, as a men's pastor, I would say get in a huddle or in, in uh, you know, on Wednesday night, uh, I, I teach my class, uh, on, uh, and I call it the locker room. And we get about 80 guys, and we have them at tables. So there's eight to 10 men at every table. And so they develop their friendships because we do a lot of uh, uh, discussion of the scriptures that whatever I'm teaching. And, uh, I, you know, you got to get involved with other men because, number one, you know, Proverbs 17, 17 says, a friend loves at all times and a brother is born for adversity. So we need help and encouragement. And so do you have a man in your life that is going to encourage you, that is going to come alongside of you, that you can um, call up in the middle of the night for prayer or come call in the middle of the night for uh, you know, for in for encouragement, you know, uh, in, in Hebrews 20, 10, 24, and 25, it says, so let us consider how we may spur each other on to love and good deeds. Do not, uh, do not stop meeting together as some have grown in the habit of. So we need to lock arms with other men, uh, to, to be helped and, and encouraged. And, and, the second part of that is uh, we need accountability. And Proverbs twenty-seven seventeen says, as iron sharpens iron, so shall one man sharpen another. And, you know, when you sharpen iron, sharpens iron, you see sparks. But the sparks sharpen the blade, and it makes us more sharp. Uh, and so we need to help hold each other accountable, and, and we need to be honest with one another, and we need to encourage one another and, and uh, you know, um, in, in the book Locking Arms, Stu Weber points out that if Jonathan had not died, David would have never fallen with uh, um, Bathsheba. Hmm. And, and so, uh, you know, and that, that's a great point. Could, who, could, who can hold the king uh, accountable? Well, someone who's entered into a covenant relationship with them. And... Uh, and that's exactly what Jonathan and David did. They entered into a covenant relationship. They were brothers. They were one in spirit. Um, and and uh, uh, so, if, if you know, the, the beginning of the chapter, when David falls, it, it, it starts out uh, in the spring when the kings went out to war, David stayed at home. Well, who can say, hey, what do you... What's up with this, David? You're not going out to war with your with your troops, or what's up with you checking out Bathsheba? You can't do that. That's Uriah's wife. Hmm. But nobody was there to hold him uh, him accountable because Jonathan had um, had uh, died in in war uh, along with his father Saul, and then Samuel the prophet had passed away, so he had no accountability, and that's why uh, he fell. So, you know, we need to hold each other accountable. And, and the other, you know, another reason is because God calls us on this great adventure. I don't know about you, but I love adventure. I love whitewater yeah. rafting. Uh, I love rock climbing, mountain biking. I love that stuff. 
But God calls us on a great adventure to be involved in his work. In Matthew 4.19, uh, Jesus walks by Simon and Andrew, and he says, follow me and I will teach you to be fishers of men. Hmm. And so we are called, that invitation that was 2,000 years ago to to uh, to Peter and Andrew, his brother, brother, that invitation is to us that God could use us in this great adventure, in his work, in spite of our uh, brokenness, in spite of our darkness, in spite of us being knuckleheads, that God can use us. And what a blessing and challenge that is at the same time. So we are called uh, to be part of, of kingdom work. You know, and one, one of my one of my favorite psalms is Psalm one thirty, 130, Psalm one thirty three. How good and how pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. It is like like it is like precious oil being poured on the head, running down the head and onto the beard, running down uh, to Aaron's beard and the cook and the collars of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon raining down on Mount Zion. For there the Lord commands his blessing, either life, even life forevermore. And, you know, there, there's several facets of that psalm. Number one, it's God's pleasure when men get together and live mm. in unity. And it's not just hang out. It's really live in unity. And the the oil being poured on the head is the anointing of the priesthood. And we're called to be priests of our family. We're called to be in leadership. We're called to live, live uh, a life that that reflects God's glory. And then and then you get down to the dew of Hermon raining down on Mount Zion. The symbolism of Mount Zion is God's people. Well, when men get excited about Jesus, families change, communities change, churches change, marriages change. You know, when men get excited about following hard after Jesus, um, it's it's obvious to see. And at the end, it says fruits. For there, Lord, the Lord commands his blessing, even hmm. life forevermore. That's, that's awesome. Last question before we get you out of here. I know you've got a lot of things on your plate with with being on the radio and, and uh, men's ministry. What do you consider your mission field? The men. Hmm. I consider that, you know, men, I, 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 you know, my, uh, my passion uh, my excitement is 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 uh, encouraging and challenging men and counseling men, and when men you know, see men get excited about Jesus, game, that that just makes my day. And so, you know, I do a lot of men's conferences, and uh, do, I do a lot of, um, you know, I do a ton of them. You know, uh, whether it's here at the Bible Chapel, whether it's you know, uh, man up uh, at uh, Victory or from only we've done that here. We've done that at Stage AE. Um, I've been uh, overseas to speak at men's conferences uh, and uh, and around the country. So I, I just when men get excited about Jesus, I get excited. That's great, man. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Uh, it, this means a lot to me. I, uh, I I've listened to you on the radio for many years, and so this this means a lot to me hearing your story. But uh, have a good season and and um, safe travels and all that. All right, thanks, Gabe. Uh, it was a privilege being on your show, buddy. Take care of yourself. That was our interview with Tunch Jokin. I'd like to thank Tunch for taking the time out of his busy schedule to talk to us. Yeah, he does a lot of stuff. Wears a lot of hats. He does. Uh, he is he is the men's ministry. He's the leader of men's ministry at the church that he attends. Um, and he, yeah, like you said, he's he has a lot of hats. He has a radio show. He's on this all the Steeler games. Travels. Oh. Yeah, travels with those. the team. Uh, he's he's got a lot of hats, and that was an honor that he 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 took the time for our show today. 
Um, I mean, it's hard enough to put out a podcast every other week. I can't imagine every day. Yeah, every day having a show. That's it's rough. Yikes. And uh, so, like sports and faith, you know, that's an interesting relationship. A lot of times people will say, hey, I'd like to thank God. But when you hear a guy like Tun Shelkin, you know it's genuine. Um, yeah. So, like, what has been some of your experiences with, like, athletes and faith? And, like, what has been your personal opinion without going too far crazy? Who, me? Yeah. Well, I played sports for most of my life. Yeah. Uh, this is where you put me on the spot. Yeah. You didn't prepare me for any of this. No, it's, I would liken it to, this is probably a bad analogy, but you're like down in the foxhole with your team and a lot of people know how people in the military are, some of the language, some of the actions. I mean, people listening in the military know when you're out there, it's different. And so that's probably a bad analogy comparatively because sports is nowhere near as important as what they do but but there are there are relationships that it's a similar mindset where you're a team you go out there and put your body on the line for each other and i don't know they the atmosphere does not lend itself to i i don't know how to put it it's not always conducive to uh christianity or any other beliefs like that and it's it's something that you wouldn't think because there's a lot of there's a lot of places to kind of fall into yes i mean just and not even like not even like sex or drugs or anything i mean those are those are just just the whole pride thing and envy greed there's a lot of that that can get lumped in to playing sports and we especially if you watch anything with ESPN oh and, yeah and yeah. like hard knocks and anything like that oh yeah but you we've been backstage at enough concerts to know this just isn't right a sports thing when bands are traveling on the road it's a very similar kind of camaraderie that sports teams have and it also and creates just because, the same kind of environment and just because they might sing about God or just because they might thank God doesn't necessarily mean they're really a, a genuine believer. And, that, and that's not me playing gatekeeper or anything like that. Um, but but there is such thing as genuineness, too. I think a lot of people would look at a guy like Tony Dungy and say, okay, that dude is as genuine as they come. And there are some other athletes where... Maybe that's not the case. Yeah, every, and I hate and I hate I hate saying that because it sounds like I'm being the gatekeeper. But, but there's just, a there is a facade, and a lot of it is is some of it's a marketing thing. Some of it's you know just like Christian music. I mean, it's some of it's a marketing thing. You should just wrap the whole song from the Cross Movement. Huh? Oh. What? Right. That's what that song's all about. Yeah. Yeah, so you know, with Tunch, you know, he he had a he had a very interesting experience where he actually was born into like the Muslim faith and, mm-hmm. and converted, and he and that was a real thing for him. Uh, and a lot of that, you know, as he talked about in the interview, was happened because there were men around him that 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 kind of they were his you know his backbone, on, uh, and when he needed it and. And that that can be true for you as a listener, you know, with a not necessarily. I mean, sometimes that's a church body. Sometimes that's uh, just a group of of people, uh, whatever that might look for you. Maybe a community group. Maybe I don't know. Maybe just a a, maybe a group of people that you meet uh, at a tavern on the weekend. You know, that that's just holds you accountable. It's important to pay attention to who your leaders are, too. If you're going with the whole sports analogy, players act like they're coaches. Like, that they take on Monkey see, monkey do. Yeah, you mentioned Tony Dungy. I mean, his whole team, from top to bottom, 
I mean, I'm sure they had their problems. There is a, yeah, the, he set, there's an expectation he set a standard. level. Yeah, for sure. And and sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes that's not a good thing. Mm, yeah. Yeah, so it's weird talking about sports because we haven't really gotten into sports too much on the show. But I thought it'd be fun to have somebody from that world on the show. If there's any Patriots fans out there that would like my Antonio Browns Antonio Brown jersey. Yeah, and we we uh forgive you for all of that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so we are gonna head off into the sunset. Like I said, if you want to hear more about the Tunch Ilkin interview, check out our Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash decent Christian talk. Uh yeah, I'll be talking more about how that all went down. That's fun. An underdog. And don't, yeah, don't miss our conversation about Audio Adrenaline's underdog. I wince every time I say the word. That's definitely one of my favorite albums. Especially the connection yeah. with Jesus. So, yeah, we are on Twitter, DC Talk Act 2. We are on Facebook, Decent Christian Talk. Hopefully, this podcast won't be flagged for spam like the last one was. Yeah. Thank you, Facebook. I Promoting your... Posting... Posting about a podcast in my own group. Yeah. Promoting an album. Where I'm an admin. That. that yeah. Oh. I don't know. Thanks. I'm, I'm so mad I can't thanks, put words together. Thanks, Facebook. We are on Spotify. We are on Apple Podcast. I got it right this time. I'm surprised. iHeartRadio, Himalaya app, whatever you listen to podcasts to, we are there. Uh, give us a nice review if that app has that function. We would definitely appreciate that. And subscribe to us wherever you listen to your sh- shows at. We're also on YouTube and SoundCloud and all that fun stuff. We also have a website, decentchristiantalk.com. If you'd rather give a one-time donation, you can check that out on there through PayPal. We would greatly appreciate that. And most importantly, everyone out there listening to this knows a Steelers fan because we are everywhere. Tell your friends about this podcast because they will know who Tun Chilkin is and they will be excited and they will listen. Yes. Share it with a friend. That's a, that's absolutely our favorite thing that you could do. Share this show with a friend. And hug a Steelers fan this week because yeah, we need it. We need it bad. Yeah. Don't forget to tip your waiters and waitresses. We'll catch you next time. Thanks. Don't forget to tip your waiters and waitresses. Thanks. <laughs>